Hello, welcome back to Core cool Finance. I'm Matt Brown, joined by Mark Oswald, strategist at ADMISI. And we're going to do almost like a Christmas carol thing. <laughs> Ghost of markets past, present and future. Let, let's look back at the year. Let's look at where we are. And more yeah. importantly, let's, let's look forward to 2018 and what the markets and maybe the central banks can, can bring us. Well, I mean, sadly, one would have to say that this year has been about Bitcoin, Bitcoin and Bitcoin. <laughs> Never um, heard of it. Um, and... I think that's an important thing for people to understand about Bitcoin, which is going to be a big talking point mm -hmm. for next year as well, because at some stage this probably will unravel. Um, but the most important thing to understand about Bitcoin is not, you know, how much further can it go up. It could go up lots more. Yes. Yeah. You know, maybe a factor of five, ten, twenty. I don't know. Um, but the important thing to remember is it's not a market. There's no market simply because, yes, we do have a futures contract, which has been poorly attended, one has to say, when one looks at this first edition of Bitcoin futures, um, because the people who should be sellers are not sellers. Okay. Uh, whether you, w when you're thinking of things like um, grains or oil yep. or the, the other big uh, futures contracts, there's always someone who wants to sell forward to lock in the current price. Mm -hmm. Because that's Big, a physical commodity. You because have it's a, a physical, yeah, yeah. You know, you've got supply coming to yes. the market. Um, unlike that, with Bitcoin, the miners of Bitcoin actually only wanted to do one thing, which is just go up as much as possible. Um, so on that basis, obviously, you don't actually have a market. Mm -hmm. uh, because anyone else who wants to sell it short is going to be effectively encumbered by people who don't want to sell. And it's very costly to go short. For, uh, it's for a very costly to go short. Time. And when you look at Bitcoin futures, you actually look at it. I, I had a friend the other day who was saying to me, yes, but the margin's only 25%. I said, that's what the official margin is. Mm -hmm. I said, but if you go to your clearer, um, and leaving aside the issue of the exchange fees and the clearing fees mm -hmm. are very, very expensive by comparison to other futures contracts, um, they will ask you for 60 to 75%, at which point you're going, right, so what's the point of actually trading the future? Yeah. Be that as it may, it will still be a very hot topic for 2018. I think the other subjects for 2018, it's a mix of things. Um, I suspect, actually, politics will be more of a thing than it's proved to be this year. We came into if 20... Possible, yeah. Yes, we came into 2017 you know, talking about politics and the politics that we were ended up being worried about was last year's politics. It mm -hmm. wasn't France, it wasn't Netherlands, even Germany's election, uh, which will be, an, you know, forming a German government is going to be difficult and that could be a big issue for next year. Um, but uh, the uh, Trump mm -hmm. and Brexit have been the big themes of yes. this year. So last year's politics, not this year's politics. And those two bits of politics will be around next year. Um, I think it's probably not incorrect, this isn't a forecast, um, to wonder whether when we get to the midterm elections, mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Trump will still be in charge or whether he'll be perhaps... Given the option to exit the door gracefully on perhaps on the grounds of ill health, yes, um, because we, we've got to that stage where one has to look at U.S. politics, and you do sort of look at it and think, "Wow, this is the world's leading country, and this man is in charge, mm -hmm. and um, he's antagonising pretty much every nation that you can care to think of." And at some point, one does have to wonder whether that doesn't have to actually stop. So that will definitely be a topic. Brexit will certainly be a topic. Um, my feeling would be that, yes, we've got this meeting uh, this week, mm -hmm. um, but that doesn't really resolve anything. It's, it's a very, very complex issue, and the complexity of sorting out trade negotiations is what's really going to come right to the mm -hmm. front, uh, forefront next year. The other issues are going to be, right, so for the last five to six years, the answer has always been 
uh, how can the equity, well, the question's always been, how can equity markets keep on going up? Yes. Um, and the answer is, well, because bond yields are low. So the question for next year, as we look at a Fed, which was probably going to hike rates maybe three times next year, um, and get rates to a level which are investable, mm-hmm. as opposed to uninvestable, as they have been for a long time, as we get to the point where the ECB is done, and we start to actually realise that actually central bank banks are not going to be pumping in a whole load of money outside of the Bank of Japan, yeah, yeah. and with the Fed draining money, we actually, by the end of next year, will see central banks on the, the other side of the fence. They'll be taking money out of the market. And that's going to be the big challenge for investors, because as bond yields gradually rise, and I really want to emphasise I'm not making a big bear case for bond yields here. Uh All I'm saying is we may get towards three, three and a quarter percent in the US. Um, Not huge. Uh You know, if you actually look at it as a return, it's still a poor return. But we've got all this money, which is in credit, which is in equities, which is in risk assets. And I rather think that it's going to be a more difficult year for risk assets. The interesting one's going to be commodities. Mm-hmm. Um, I suspect there's a, a rotation trade somewhere in there, above all, out of pretty much anything else, into um, agri. Mm-hmm. Grains have done very, very badly this year. Um, and as much as I sort of understand that in you know the basic outlook because of advances in technology, um, is not that we're not going to see um, a huge rise, but commodity is probably going to be the most interesting space. Uh, The other interesting aspect is what happens to the dollar. In principle, when one looks at interest rate differentials right now, you'd go, well, the dollar is a raging buy, but as we've seen this year, it hasn't proved to be either against even against the pound, mm-hmm. um, it's not proved to be a raging buy. Um, the question for next year really is not about why that's not going to be, but it's whether we start factoring in the, the idea that the ECB will be closer to a rate hike. They're not going to hike rates next year, but they'll be closer to one. Um, The Bank of Japan will be walking away from the table. The Swiss National Bank yesterday was basically saying, you know what, we're looking at this inflation rate and we're thinking, "Mm, we may have underclubbed things. I don't think they're going to hike rates next year, but, and even if they did, we're going from probably minus 0.75 to minus a half. Great. (laughs) Um, But those are, you know... uh, when you start to look at the other countries in the world starting to move towards thinking about in hiking interest rates, it probably is not going to be a fantastic year for the dollar. However, I still feel that in an environment where, where we perhaps become, um, which is less um, favourable for risk assets, mm-hmm. the, the dollar could benefit as people go and say, well, hold on a minute, I don't want a whole load of risk assets and I may not want to buy the S&P 500, but those US Treasury yields at 100 or 200 basis points above pretty much everything else in the developed world will start to look quite attractive. And the other part, the other thing which is going to be interesting in all of this is what happens with China. Mm -hmm. Because China is going to be, I think, a big issue next year. They've got to this point, yes, the, the economy is probably going to do better than people think, but they are now trying to micromanage the credit risks, mm-hmm. the debt risks, uh, the pollution risks above all. All of those things are likely to be a, quite a big headwind for the Chinese economy. Um, and I think, unlike this year, where... China was a big talking point at the beginning, beginning yes. of the year, and then we ignored it for pretty much the whole of the year. Next year, it's probably going to be much more of a talking point, and uh, a very important one as well. And Germany is going to be an important talking point. So 
wheeling back to what I was talking about earlier. I have a horrible feeling, um, looking at my homeland, that there may not be a government even before May. And that, in the first instance, is not going to do the Euro many favours, uh, because uh, Germany is not the Euro, but for a lot of people the perception is yes. the Euro is Germany. Um, and if we don't have a government installed by January, I think, uh, then there are people going to be looking at the Euro going, oh, forget Super Mario, what's happened to Super Merkel? Well, lots, lots indeed to look forward to next year. But, uh, Mark, in the meantime, thank you for joining us uh, throughout the year. And we look very much, well, we, sorry, we look forward to having you back on the show next year uh, to talk about Pleasure. these points. Yes.